Hello, my name is Fakhar Lodi and I am a professor of computer science at the National University of Computer and Emerging Sciences, Pakistan. Today we are going to have some fun and we'll play a few games and hopefully we'll learn something through the process. The first game that I'm going to play with you is a very simple game. So I will introduce the game to you and I'll show you the rules of the game and then I'll ask a few questions and hopefully towards the end we will be able to answer those questions. So let me introduce the game to you. In this game I have two types of balls. I have solid balls and I have striped balls, plain pool or billiard balls that uh, we have. And the game is very simple. I will put a few balls in the basket. I'll take a few balls, some striped and some solid, and put them in the basket. Now I will start playing the game. So in this game, what I do is I take two balls without actually looking at the balls from the basket and I then look at the type of these balls. In this particular case, both of these, they are striped. So the rule is very simple. Rule says that if the balls are of the same type, then I put one solid ball back into the basket. So I take these two balls that I have pulled back from the basket. I'll put these balls on the side. I've taken a solid ball from here and I'll put this solid ball back into the basket. Then I'll keep on playing the game. Again, I take two balls out. This time I have two solid balls. Once again, the same rule is applied. That is, if the balls are of the same type, that is, if balls are both solid or both striped, then I will put one solid ball back into the basket. I play again, so I take two balls. So this time I have a solid ball and a striped ball. So if the balls are of different types, not of the same type, then I will put the striped ball back into the basket. So these are the only two rules that I am using to play this game. That is, if the balls are of the same type, I will put a solid ball back into the basket. And if they are of different types, then I'll put a striped ball back into the basket. And I will keep on playing this game until I am left with only one ball in the basket. So I started with a few balls as I have taken these two balls back, one striped, one solid. So I am putting the striped back. Then I take the two balls again, solid and a striped. So I put the striped back. So every time what I am doing is I am taking two balls out and I am putting one back into the basket. And that means every time the number of balls that I have in the basket, they are reduced by one. So that means if I started with 10 balls, so after nine iterations, I will be left with only one ball and that is the last ball. So the question really is, given the number of solid balls and striped balls in the basket, can we tell type of the last ball? So let me play a game again with you and then show you how the game is to be played. And then we will ask this question again and uh, I'll let you try to figure out the answer. So let me play the big game. So I have, I take, let's say four solid balls. I put them in the basket. I take four striped balls and I put 
them in the basket. So, I have 8 balls in total, 4 solid and 4 striped. Now, let me play this game with you. So, I take 2 balls out. In this particular case, I have a solid ball and I have a striped ball. So, the rule says if the balls are of different types, then I will put the striped ball back and I will put the solid ball on the side. Then I go inside again and I take two balls again. In this particular case, both of these they are of the same type, both striped. So, I will put them on the side. I will take a solid ball from uh, this uh, pile of balls that I have and I will put the solid ball back into the bucket. Now, I go inside again. Both of these they are of different type. So, I will put the striped ball back and the solid ball comes here. I go back, they are of different type. So, I will put the striped ball into the basket and take the solid ball away. Then I go back, once again I have different types. So, I will put the striped ball back and put the solid ball here. Then I go inside again. Now, I have two of the same type, both striped. So, I will put them aside and I will take a solid ball and put it back. And then I have I am left with only two balls in the basket. So, I take these two balls. Now, these two both of these they are solid. So, what I do is I will put the solid ball one solid ball back and I am left with only one ball and that is the color of the last ball. So, the general question is given x number of solid balls and y number of striped balls that is a given thing that we know the number of balls that are there in the basket. Can we tell the color of the last ball in the basket after you know when we play the game. So, that is the question and I will let you figure that out uh, by playing a few games and observing if you can see something there. Welcome back. Uh, I hope you have played a few games. Uh, have you been able to figure out the answer? Have you been able to uh, guess the right answer, the type of the last ball? Does it look like a random guess? Does it seem like that it depends upon the sequence of moves or is it something which is independent of the sequence of moves? Let us try to understand. Let us try to play a few games and let us try to observe this thing systematically. So, let us once again go back and play start with a one ball game. That is we have only one ball in the basket. So, if we have only one ball then there are only two possibilities. That is I can have a striped ball in the basket if there is a only one ball striped ball in the basket, I pull that and that is the type of that ball. If it was a solid ball, you know obviously, the answer is trivial. You know that is the type of that last ball because I started with only one ball and hence that was the type of that ball. Now, we can play a two ball game. With two balls, I have three different options. I can have two solid balls. So, these two solid balls are in the basket and that is what we started with. So, I pull these two solid balls back and according to the rules, I will put one solid ball back into the basket and that is the type of the ball that I will have in the basket. So, if I started with two solid balls, I will be left with only one solid ball and that will be the type of the ball in the basket. Now, the second option is I start with two striped balls. So, if I start with two striped balls, I pull these two striped balls. The rule says that I will put 
one solid ball back and I take the solid ball and put it here and since I started with two balls, so that is the last ball and the type of the last ball is a solid ball. So, the second option was two straight balls and I ended up with one solid ball. And the third possibility is that I started with two different types of balls, one striped and one solid and I put it, put them there and I, you know, when I pull them back, I will put the striped ball back into the basket and take this solid ball here and that will be the color of the last ball or type of the last ball that is the striped ball that I have. So, the third option was solid and striped and I was left with a side ball. So, these were the three different uh, two ball games and in that case if I started with balls of the same type, I ended up with a solid ball. If I started with balls of different type, then I ended up with a striped ball. So, I will note these things down. Now, I play a three ball game. Now, in this particular case, I have four different possibilities all solid balls, two solid balls and one striped ball, one solid ball and two striped ball and all striped balls. So, these are the four possibilities that I have. So, let us exercise these possibilities and let us see what happens there. So, I start with three solid balls in the basket. I put them here. I take two solid balls according to the rule I will put one back into the basket. Then I have two balls both of these they are solid. So, I take both of these out and I will put one solid ball back and the last ball that I have is a solid ball. Now, the second option is I start with two solid balls and one striped ball. I take two balls out one striped one solid. So, I will put the striped ball back into the basket. Then I will take the remaining two balls one striped one solid and I will put the striped ball back into the basket and I will be left with one striped ball. So, if I started with two solid and one striped I will have the striped ball back. Next is I have one solid and two striped. I put them there. I take two balls out. These are one solid one striped. So, I will put the striped ball back into the basket. The next is I will take these two balls both of these are they are striped. So, I will put a solid ball back into the basket and that is the type of the last ball. So, I started with one solid and two striped and I ended up with a solid ball there. Then the last one is I have three striped balls. So, with these three striped balls I will pull two from the basket both of these they are of the same type. So, I will put a solid ball back into the basket. Then I have a solid and a striped. So, I will put the striped ball back into the basket. I take the solid ball away and then the type of the last ball is the striped one. So, that is what I am left with and I make a note of all these three, these four options that I have. That is when I started with three solid balls, the type of the last ball was solid. When I started with two solid one striped, the type of the last ball was striped. When I started with one solid and two striped, the type of the last ball was solid and when I started with three striped balls, the type of the last ball was striped. So, do you see a pattern here? Do you need to play some more games to observe the pattern? So, please play a few games, just go systematically and see if you can identify a pattern and then can use that pattern to tell the color of the last ball or the type of the last ball that we have. Welcome back. I hope you have been playing the game and uh, you would have figured out the right answer and uh, hopefully your teacher would have helped you in coming to the right answer. Many of you at least would have been able to do that. 
And those of you who have been able to figure that out, I guess the answer is, your answer would be that it is, the answer lies in the number of the striped balls. That is, if we started with even number of striped balls, we will end up with a solid ball. And if we started with odd number of striped balls, we end up with a striped ball. So, the number of striped balls, they determine the outcome of this game. And actually, the number of solid balls is, uh, it does not come into the play. You know, we have solid balls, but you know, the end result will not depend upon the number of the solid balls. Having concluded that, now the next question is, how sure are you about this outcome? Can we say that if we had 1,000 balls in the basket, we would still have the same answer? We have played games with few balls, 5, 10, 20 balls, maybe up to a maximum. But you know, is that the general answer? In mathematics, what we do is, you know, these examples uh, of, you know, doing anything, they help us in building our confidence in some conclusion that we have, some observation that we see and based upon those observations, we draw a conclusion. And the more we uh, observe, the better confidence that we have, more confidence we have in our conclusion. But that does not prove anything. A very simple example is that uh, I can make a statement that all integers are less than 100. Obviously, this is an incorrect statement, but I can give you infinite examples that fulfill this statement. You know, as you all know, all negative numbers, they are less than 100. So, I can keep on citing negative numbers and I will show you, see this number is less than 100, this number is less than 100 and hence my statement is true. So, I can make a statement, I can cite examples, but you know that statement may still be untrue. So, in order to prove something, we have to kind of build a mathematical model and you know use some kind of logic to be sure that the statement that we make is true or false or whatever. Uh, the answer is. So, what kind of model can we make here in this particular game? So, in this particular case, we can have a very simple model. All we need to do is translate the rules of the game in mathematics. And what are the rules? Very simple rules. We have two basic rules that is, when we have balls of the same type, we will put a solid ball back into the basket and when we have balls of different types, then we will put a striped ball back into the basket. So, let us try to understand, let us try to write this rule. So, this is a function of the striped balls, number of striped balls and the number of solid balls in the basket. So, a rule is when I take two balls out, I have three different possibilities. I take two solid balls out. So, the number of solid balls are reduced by 2 by taking these two out. And then the rule says that I put one solid ball back into the basket. So, that means, so when I took two solid balls uh, from the basket, I will end up with one less solid ball in the basket and the number of stride balls will not change. So, the number of solid balls will be the starting number of solid balls uh, minus 1 and the number of stride balls will remain the same. In the second case, I have two striped balls. So, I take these two striped balls. So, I reduce the number of striped balls by 2 in the basket and I put one solid ball back into the basket. That means, the number of solid balls will be incremented by 1 and the stride balls will be decremented by 2 in this particular case. And the third possibility is that I have a solid ball and I have a stride ball and in that particular case, 
that means you know by taking these two out i have reduced the number of solid balls by one and i have reduced the number of striped balls by one and then when i put a striped ball back that means the number of striped ball will be incremented by one so it will remain the same the that we started with and the number of the solid balls they are decremented by one so these are the three rules these are the three things that we can do and i have translated these into simple mathematical formula now as you can see and observe these rules we see that the number of stride balls they are either reduced by 2 or they remain the same and on the other hand the number of solid balls they are either incremented by 1 or they are decremented by 1 depending upon the case that we are dealing with so that means that if we started with even number of uh, stride balls then we will either reduce 2 or we will reduce 0 balls so every time we reduce 2 balls we will if at the end we have 2 stride balls we will take these 2 out and we will put 1 solid ball back so the number of the stride ball will be 0 in that case and the number of solid balls will be 1 and that will be the outcome of the last ball in the second case when we started with odd number of stride balls so we reduce two stride balls in some steps and at the end we are left with one stride ball and some other solid balls now as we can see from our model that we cannot remove one stride ball we have to remove a pair of stride balls two at a time so that means if we are left with one stride ball at any point in time that ball cannot be removed from the basket and ultimately we will be left with that one particular ball and hence if we started with odd number of stride balls we will end up with a stride ball and if we started with even number of stride balls then we end up with uh, a solid ball in the basket and hence the observation that we made earlier uh, with this with the help of this mathematical model we prove that that observation will hold whatever the number of balls that we uh, play this game with it does not uh, matter and the only thing that determines the outcome of the game is the number of stride ball and the number of solid balls they are immaterial they are irrelevant as far as the outcome of the game is concerned this uh, technique that we used here in this particular case this technique is known as induction what we do is when we are given a problem we start by applying the rules or whatever that we have on small examples so we started with games of one ball then we played the game with two balls then we played the games with three balls and we started to make some observations and you know we are not very sure about how true those observations are but at least we are getting some idea and that is what this induction is all about and you know uh, we can then prove things with that and then in order to be sure about our observation we try to develop a mathematical model of the phenomena that we are trying to observe and with the help of some kind of mathematical model we can hopefully prove uh, the truthfulness of our observation and that is what this thing is all about i hope you enjoyed this game i hope you learned something from this game and i hope you will be able to apply this technique to solve some unknown problems that are given to you this is a very useful technique the basic principle here is when you are given an unknown problem and you are lost start working with small examples so start with the first step so in this particular case the first step was we played this game with one ball then we played this game with two balls then we played this game with three balls so when you do things like that hopefully you will be able to make certain observations 
and then once you have some observations you can you know draw some conclusions they you know we cannot say anything about those conclusions at that point but you know we have some idea and then we try to come up with mathematical models that will help us in proving or disproving that conclusion that we have drawn and hopefully that will lead us to something that we can use later. So once again I thank you uh, for having uh, played this game with me and I hope uh, you enjoyed it. Goodbye and thank you once again. Hi. So the first thing that uh, you need to uh, know about this game is that you can play this game with any uh, types of objects. All you need is two different types of objects. So you can have, uh, you know, oranges and apples, or anything that uh, uh, you can make a distinction between. So you don't necessarily have to have balls here. You could have anything there. Now. After the you know the first break that we have, you know, you should uh, let the students play these games. And uh, the basic uh, purpose here is let the students have this feeling of randomness. So you know, if you play this game with four, five, six different balls, you know, students will come up with different answer, and then they will have this feeling that you know the answer is not deterministic here. And you know that is the first thing that uh, I, I think that will help them understand the process and the understand of this technique of induction. You know, doing it systematically. So you play this game with the students, and you know, uh, ask the questions. Uh, and in most cases, the students they tell you that you know it is a random thing. It, it's not really uh, anything that uh, you can determine it all depends upon the number of balls or the sequence of the balls that you or the sequence of the objects that you pull from the basket or you know bucket that you have. So you know that kind of uh, you will get these kind of answers there. And then you know we go to the uh, second part that is the second module and then there we make uh, certain observations and you know we start uh, looking at the problem systematically. Once again, after we finish that, that is, we finish playing a three ball game, some of the students, they uh, might be able to come up uh, with the right answer. But in my experience, uh, most students, they still need some more observations. So you play a four ball game with them. Remember that in a four ball game, there are going to be five different possibilities. You can have all four solid balls. Or you can have three solid balls and one straight balls, uh, ball, and then the third possibility is two of each type, then one solid and three striped, and finally you can have four straight balls. So there are five different possibilities, and you should uh, uh, tell the students that okay, we take this possibility and this is the outcome, and so and so forth. And hopefully, after playing this four ball game, the student will be able to make the observation. It is important that all these games, they are kind of uh, note, uh, you make notes of these games and you know, you uh, put them on the blackboard or something like that. That is okay, we started with this thing, this is what happened, this is what happened, and this is what the final result is, and so on and so forth. So when all the observations, they have been listed down, enumerated, and then you put them in front of the students. There, that is the time when students, they really uh, see the pattern there. If you just play a game and then don't show these games uh, all at the same time, the results of these games all at the same time, the students probably won't be able to make that conclusion or come to that conclusion there. So that is the second thing. And you know the idea really here is, that students they start with this uh, uh, kind of uh, randomness uh, they think that this whole thing is random and then they start observing the pattern so they realize that it is not really random thing so then we encourage the students to okay now you see there is a pattern can we actually uh, convert that into a mathematical model although 
you could have come up with the mathematical model without actually you know going through all this exercise and playing these games but you know the idea really is once you start observing a pattern that tells the student okay there is some mathematics behind this thing there is something that you can actually you know formulate and then use later and that is probably the time when you encourage the students to come up with the mathematical models of such things so as uh, you know after we have finished this thing you know you can encourage the students to play different types of games there are number of games that you can come up with uh, which seem random at first but you know when you pay attention to these games when you make observations you can come up with the right answer and you can come up with the mathematical model so here is another game that you can play with the students and this game is typically played with the number of sticks but i'm going to play this game here in front of you with uh, uh, some balls here so the rule of this game is very simple the rule is that you know i have i play this game uh, with two players so there are two players who are involved in playing this game and uh, we have a number of sticks or number of objects uh, we know uh, how many objects are there to start with and these two players they take turns in picking one two or three objects at a time so here i have let's say these 15 balls so i can pick one ball or i can pick two balls or i can pick three balls at a time players they take turns in playing this game just like that and the objective of this game is that the player who picks the last set of balls or objects that we have wins the game so the question really is that given a number of objects can we tell who will win the game and what is the winning strategy and you know you let the students play this game and uh, make certain observations and then come up with a mathematical formula and then they will realize that this game can be we can have a strategy based upon uh, the observations and the formula that we have and we that strategy helps us winning this game no matter what the opponent does so let me uh, show you how to play this game so i have these 15 balls here so i start with uh, so i have let me you know 3 and uh, 4 7 and 3 10 so i am the first player so i pick three balls the other player picks one ball so three when i pick three balls i am left with 12 balls here so the other player picks one ball so now i have 11 balls there so i pick three balls once again i can put these balls in the basket so i am left with the other player is left with eight balls this time he picks two balls now i am left with six balls so i pick two balls again now the other player picks one two or three balls doesn't matter let's say he picks one ball now i can pick one two or three balls so you know i pick the last set of balls and i win now is that something is there a strategy to it or it was just uh, a random thing and you know i was fortunate enough to win this game so you let the uh, students play this game and uh, you will see that you know once again once again if you start playing this game systematically that you play this game with one object then they play this game with two objects then you play this game with three objects play this game with four objects play this game with five objects six objects seven objects eight objects nine objects and so on and so forth a pattern will emerge and pattern will be that if you started with number of balls which are not divisible by four you can 
you know, and if you play the game correctly, you will always win. And what is the mathematical formula behind this thing? How many balls should you pick to make sure that you win? The model, as you will see, as you will observe, the model will come out to be very simple model that I take if n is the number of balls in the pile that I have or number of sticks or number of objects that I have, I take mod of this that is I divide the number of balls object by 4 and I look at the remainder and that is the number of objects that I need to, pit, uh, to pick in order to win the game. So, I started for example, when I started with uh, uh, let us say 7 balls. So, these 7 balls, 7 divided by 4, the remainder is 3. So, that means I need to pick 3 balls. So, I will leave my opponent in a situation where the number of balls that are left is always divisible by 4. So, whatever he picks, let us say he picks 2, I can always pick the other 2. So, I can always make it uh, convert it into a situation that you know the other player when his turn comes he uh, is left with uh, number of balls which are divisible by 4. So, that means I will always end up winning the game. So, once again uh, if you make your students uh, uh, let your students play this game and make certain observations hopefully you know they will be able to come up with this observation and they will be able to you know come up with the winning strategy. You can change the rule of the game. Once they have figured this thing out, you can ask them okay now let us change the rule of the game and let us you know invert it that is the person who picks the last object loses. If you know so now what is the winning strategy? I want to leave one ball at the end so that the other person picks that ball and you know I win. So, once again start playing this game, ask the students to play this game with one ball, two balls, three balls, four balls, five balls, six balls and so on and so forth and once again let them make certain observations and let them come up with a mathematical formula. And once again you will see the in this in this particular case the formula is not going to be very different from what we have seen earlier and it is going to be n plus 1 divided by 4 and you know that is the uh, you look at the remainder and that is the number of objects that you need to pick in order to win the game. But once again you can let the students uh, come up with the uh, formula and help the student guide the students towards that end. You can as I said you can play a number of games, you can you know pick games uh, uh, from a different domain, but you know continuing with this particular set of games that is playing as uh, picking the objects and you know two players playing this game, you can change the rules once again. You know another kind of rule could be that you ask the students that you know now the rule is that you can pick one, two or four objects not 1, 2 or 3, 1, 2 or 4. So, you cannot pick 3 objects. This is a challenging problem and you can ask the students to you know take this home and you know play this thing and come up with the model and in this particular case you will see that there is a cyclic pattern. So, you know the pattern is not very simple that you know you take this number and divide it by a certain number and then you know that is the kind of remainder and the number of objects that you, you need to pick. Uh, it will be slightly more complex and slightly more difficult, but you know if the students can actually discover that, that will be really great. And you know, so once again the idea really is let the students make certain observations and then based upon certain observation let them come up with mathematical formula and so you know hopefully. Uh, by doing this kind of exercise, uh, they will uh, be able to you know apply these kind of principles uh, on unknown problems that they you know come across and they will be able to figure things.
things out and that hopefully will open their minds uh, to uh, these new kind of uh, problems that they see here. So, once again I thank you very much for participating in the Blossoms project. I hope this exercise was useful and I hope your students will learn something from the, this exercise. Thank you very much. Thank <music> you.